We have some bright regions on the Earth-facing disk that are bumping up the solar flux, and another coronal hole will be sending us some fast wind soon. Those stories and more in the news this week. This space weather forecast is sponsored in part by Millersville University. Come get certified in broadcast space weather. Visit millersville.edu slash swen. We are in a wait and see mode with space weather this week. As we take a look at our Earth-facing sun, we do see a couple new bright regions on the Earth-facing disk, and these are boosting the solar flux just a little bit, which is good news to amateur radio operators and emergency responders. In fact, a couple of these regions are actually even firing off little uh, solar flares, and one of them even launched a solar storm that's gonna go west of Earth, so we don't have to worry about it hitting us. Meanwhile, we also have a coronal hole. It's actually a large a hole that's going to be rotating into the Earth strike zone over the next couple days, and it's going to be followed by yet another coronal hole, and both of these are going to give us some fast solar wind and give us more chances for aurora, which is definitely good news considering that solar storm fizzle we had the other day. So aurora photographers, keep your fingers crossed because you're going to get some more chances. Now as we switch to our far-sighted sun, this is stereo A, and it's looking at the sun pretty much from the side. You can see those bright regions beginning to exit the, the west limb in stereo view and you can also see those two coronal holes they're pretty well formed so what that means is that we're going to have chances for aurora easily over this next week for an extended period kind of off and on so that's really good news the sad thing though is that if you look just to the west of that or the east of that you're not going to see any bright regions in stereo's view so sadly what this means is that once these bright regions that are in earth's view rotate to the sun's far side we're going to be back to a spotless sun. Switching to our moon, we are now passing through the full moon on our way to a third quarter. And by the 5th of March, we'll still have the moon be about 56% illuminated. So you night sky watchers, if you plan to catch those dim objects in the sky and maybe some more aurora, you're going to have this bright companion to deal with. So be sure to check your local rise and set times. Switching to your solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are expecting the fast solar wind to hit from that coronal hole that's rotating in through the Earth's strike zone here over the next couple days. So at high latitudes, NOAA is expecting minor storm conditions with up to about a 60% chance of a major storm. And this will continue in through the early part of this week this upcoming week before things begin to settle down. Now, at mid-latitudes, we're only expecting active conditions, but we do have about a 25% chance of minor storm conditions. So we could see aurora dip down into mid-latitudes for a short while, like I said, early on in, in the week. And then things will settle down as we move closer to the weekend. But remember, we then have another coronal hole that's going to be rotating through the Earth's strike zone, so we'll bump back up. So aurora photographers, you definitely are going to get a chance to get some more aurora, which is good news considering that solar storm fizzle that we had a few days ago really was kind of a downer I think for everyone. Switching to our solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week Everything continues to be in the green when it comes to big solar flares. We do have a few bright regions on the Earth-facing disk right now, but none of them are M-flare players. So this means we have no risk for radio blackouts right now, and that should make GPS users on Earth's day side very happy. However, these regions are boosting that solar flux. Right now, we're sitting at about 80, and sadly, these regions, as they begin to rotate off of the Earth-facing disk, what's going to happen, of course, is that we're going to start seeing that solar flux dive a little bit and by the midweek we'll probably be back into the mid 70s for for solar flux which means marginal radio propagation on earth's day side will be the norm sorry to say that guys and easily within the next few days we'll be back to a spotless sun so we'll just hang in there and hopefully we'll get some new spots emerging very soon. Now on top of that, because we are still trying to climb out of that solar minimum, we still have a very high cosmic ray flux. And this means that you frequent flyers, including uh, prenatal passengers, you are in the moderate range for radiation dose, especially those who fly at high altitudes and high latitudes or fly over 800 hours annually. So please take this into consideration in your flight plans. 
So the space weather this week puts us in a wait and see mode. We do have a coronal hole that's going to be rotating in through the Earth strike zone here over the next couple days, and it's going to be sending us a nice pocket of fast solar wind. And then we have yet another coronal hole right behind it that's also going to end up sending us some more fast solar wind. So this is good news for Aurora photographers, especially after that recent solar storm fizzle that we had. You're going to have some new chances for Aurora kind of on and off easily over this next week. Now we also have a couple new bright regions on the earth facing disk and these have boosted that solar flux. Right now we're sitting in you know around 80 but that's going to begin to kind of settle down just a little bit as these regions rotate off of the sun's west limb. Meanwhile though they are a little bit flare active so they are probably causing a little bit of noise on the bands but don't worry amateur radio operators and emergency responders it's not your rig there's nothing wrong with your gear it's just the sun beginning to wake up just a little bit more. And now finally, we have uh, for you GPS users, well, you know, reception on Earth's day side shouldn't be too bad right now. We're kind of back to quiet conditions and that's good. But just know that when that fast solar wind hits on Earth's night side, anywhere near Aurora or near the dawn and dust terminators, you might have a little bit of problem with your GPS reception. I'm Tamitha Scove, the Space Weather Woman. Thank you for watching.